Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Mukhtar Rabban, and uh, my colleague is Koshla Blanche, and we are from Nelson Mandela University. And we'll be presenting on integrating digital technologies into the educational experience provided at Nelson Mandela University. I have to begin by acknowledging that the two of us are fairly anxious and a bit nervous because of the wealth of uh, knowledge and experience in the room. Uh, but they say one of the coping mechanisms is to picture the audience naked. <laughs> so if we maintain eye contact, please take it as a compliment. <laughs> Just to give you an overview of the university, um, we are based in Port Elizabeth and George. We have 27,000 plus students, seven faculties, seven campuses. We are in two provinces dealing with two sets of legislation. Um, we are located on a nature reserve as well in Port Elizabeth. Uh, our recent stats for 2017, just giving an idea of how many qualifications were awarded, uh, master's degrees and doctoral qualifications. That's just to give you a brief background because many are not familiar with our university. We are a comprehensive institution. We are uh, a merger of the former UPE, P Technicon and Vista University. And last year we were renamed from Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University to Nelson Mandela University. Drawing on some of our strategic documents, our vision and mission, Nelson Mandela University aspires to be a dynamic African university, recognized for its leadership in generating cutting edge knowledge for a sustainable future. The mission of the university is to offer a diverse range of life changing educational experiences for a better world. So these two particular extracts speak to the nature and uh, objective of our presentation today. To give you an overview of our presentation, we're going to give you a brief history and context of digital technology integration at Mandela, um, some of the emergent institutional priorities that came about. We're going to reflect on our 10-year journey, um, and then we're going to uh, strategize our way forward, and ultimately the objective of this presentation is to give you strategic institutional positions that are proposed for technology-enhanced learning and teaching at our university. And I'll hand over to my colleague. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Koshla de Blanche, and I'm actually an ICT practitioner, so I'm, I don't fit into the academic world or the academic support world. I'm what, what we define there as our third space uh, practitioner. So um, we live in a world filled with technological advances. The pace of these advances continues to be a barrier for adoption, even in the education landscape. And 10 years ago, uh, a lonely lecturer in the Faculty of Education needed a solution to, uh, to a problem. He had distance education students, and he needed a post box for them to, set, to submit the assignments and a repository where he could give them some documents. So um, he installed Moodle on an office PC, and not long after that, other academics caught, uh, it caught the attention of other academics, and we soon realized that we needed uh, institutional support and a strategy towards it. In 2011 and 2012, around about 2011, 2012, um, the university made huge strides where we, we formulated a interdisciplinary blended learning team that had academic professionals from the Center for Teaching and Learning and ICT engineers. Um, the initial focus was to create a supportive environment and one of it, its first goals was to institutionalize Moodle and to provide training and capacity development. Moodle was then migrated from the standalone PC into secured IT uh, infrastructure uh, in order to optimize stability, availability, performance, and sust sustainability for this increased growth. Uh, the, the, the formulation then, it got integrated into our teaching learning policies and a blended learning approach, uh, and, and this is where we ended up, a vision for technology enhanced education to embrace a distinctive anywhere and anytime educational approach using multiple forms of teaching approaches and technology to enhance flexible teaching and learning and program delivery 
and prepare our students for life and work in the 21st century. Remaining with that theme of creating this enabling environment, um, support for blended learning request was integrated into our ICT help desk, which provided a physical, telephonic and electronic contact point for students and staff. To further entice academics uh, to engage in the blended learning, another strategy was to encourage them to apply for technology, uh, teaching development and innovation funding. The outcomes from these projects, um, in a, as part of it, we identified champions within the faculties, um, and it also then lessened the, the support burden. They inform, it informed policy development. As we had some research papers from it. Uh, it sparked um, e-tutoring and e-assessment at Mandela University. In ICT, we then realized we needed to uh, have an approach for this increased demand in usage, and we developed what, what we coined an agile learning stack, where the builder or the owner or the teacher is, owns the model. And that's our learning stack, um, where we encourage teachers to use what they need, when they need it, affording them the autonomy that many of them demand. Uh, we, we ensured that our infrastructure was robust, but yet flexible enough to, to supply to these changing needs <coughs> of education. And then came along 2015, uh, we were one of the universities that were affected and, and during the latter part of 2016 we were completely shut down. And this, uh, um, this shutdown or the, uh, was a complete closure of all our campuses, jeopardized the 2016 academic completion. So what, what we tried almost 10 years to get to the students in a few days managed to provide as a catalyst for many teachers to revert to online education while the physical buildings were locked down and teachers were negotiating to restore normality. This turbulent environment provided an intensive burst in the adoption. We had teachers and lecturers, uh, teachers and lecturers uh, that, that embarked on innovating teaching and innovative and teach, uh, assessment practices. We had renewed teacher interests, accelerated technology, and actually, the, uh, I would think the main purpose of, of blended or online learning is the ubiquitous learning. We moved our campus to what we, we called the campus by the lake. We moved it into the, the soccer World Cup stadium, and um, that's evidence that teaching can, in fact, happen anywhere. Uh, our scul uh, there was a scullery in the stadium and that was actually the command center. So the dean of, of teaching and learning physically sat in the scullery <laughs> and operated from there. In 2016 and 2017, the move to blended ed education has maintained momentum and has now caught the attention of the policymakers. Uh, this, this particular graph, uh, shows the Moodle post or the uh, post on the LMS which is ac active or intentional posts. It's quizzes and submitting of assignments, uh, uh, engaging in discussions. And in 2015, you can see near vertical rise in, in growth. So if I reflect now on, on the 10 years that have passed, um, uh, uh, a fallacy or an assumption that ICT people make is that once we put hardware and software down, it will automatically integrate into teaching and learning. <laughs> and um, maybe a key takeaway there is that it has to be faculty driven and that drive and adoption has to come from a faculty level. Uh, a couple of challenges which I have now heard we all are experiencing is sustainable resourcing because we can always throw uh, resources at this, <coughs> this beast, but somewhere we need to stop, not stop feeding it, but it needs to be sustainable where everybody takes responsibility, the lecturer, the, the student. And, and the, the last slide was just, when, when I sit back and I personally reflect, is this overwhelming task at hand. 
And, and that slide is just where do we start, where do we start tackling it, and how do you eat an elephant? <laughs> Can I hand over to Mukta? Koshla, we can't eat elephants, we're on a nature reserve. <laughs> just reminding you, policy. Okay, um, so we are reflecting on our journey and some of the um, technologies and uh, implementations that we were fortunate to explore both from a pragmatic uh, perspective, a practical perspective, as well as theoretically, um, was blended learning, flipped classrooms, online learning, uh, OERs. We, we are using SCORM packages in some of our modules. There's virtual learning, AI, AR, gamification, e-assessment, formative and summative. Um, we explored Turnitin, particularly from a developmental resource perspective, professional and capacity development online, language learning technologies, and of course using Moodle for engagement uh, with our uh, communities um, as well. Uh, unfortunately, we can't go into the examples because we don't have sufficient time to do so. So strategizing the way forward, when our senior management reflected on how do we strategize the way forward in this very difficult time um, that we are experiencing in higher education, we had to look at what futurists are focusing on when it comes to technology integration. And so there's been a lot of focus on that, um, and that led to what uh, we now understand as backwards design thinking. So what futurists possibly you know, depict um, as what we might experience in the next 5, 10, uh, 15 years, and then using a backwards design uh, thinking approach. Uh, that's one of the elements. And uh, we drew on uh, what Alexander wrote in 2014. And I'm just going to read it to you very briefly. Um, the brick and mortar institution now synthesizes the best of face-to-face -face teaching with what the digital world has to offer. So this is Alexander painting the scenario of higher education in 2024. Blended learning is normal, with online resources playing a major role in classrooms. Professors teach in classrooms designed like scientific labs or art studios, mixing stations for presentation and discussion with stations for hands-on work. Flipped learning is no longer designated as such because the flipped classroom is just a classroom in this 2024 scenario. The entire brick and mortar campus is, in fact, a blended learning environment. Campus support staff meet with students either online or offline. Hands-on learning occurs everywhere, in and out of classrooms. Each campus site, from buildings to quads, carries associated augmented reality layers so that visitors can access information specific to each location. And he also indicates that faculty, staff, and students carry mobile devices to access, produce, and share content. Many courses rely on multimedia in multiple ways. Students create rich content, and some class structures are gamified. Games and social media are delivery mechanisms for curricular content. Much of the curriculum involves creation, storytelling, game making, collaborative media work. Colleges and universities support various career paths along digital lines, including undergraduate degrees and game design, in in-game design and digital storytelling. So we use this quotation when we reflect on what our strategy has to speak to. And continuing in, uh, in strategizing the way forward, we looked at the shifts in research, in scholarship, in teaching and learning, and we moved from a blended learning focus to a technology-enhanced education focus. We, looked, we are looking at sustainable solutions, uh, we've undergone extensive consultative processes with our students, support staff, ICT, academic staff, management, etc. We are, as Nelson Mandela University, informed by our context. We are a comprehensive uh, institution. We deal with a lot of students coming from rural backgrounds that will touch a computer for the very first time on our campuses. Uh, we look at our staff needs, our location, and our resources. We are student-centered and we are focused on student success. Digital literacy has been foregrounded. We are looking at um, how students access um, uh, these uh, platforms. And a very important focus has been the pedagogical renewal of this project. 
reflecting on pedagogy. Um, and of course also reflecting on the student learning styles that we now find in the 21st century. When we looked at our curriculum renewal as Nelson Mandela University, we've undergone, I think for the last three years, we've been focusing on our curriculum framework, the renewal of our curriculum framework. And we've identified these six elements to form part and inform our curriculum framework that ultimately affects our technology enhanced learning adoption strategy. So we are looking at and we are tackling uh, Africanization, that being a dynamic African university, all of our platforms and learning systems and environments must speak to being an African university. Um, we are looking at the notions of decoloniality, uh, of transformation of the curriculum. Uh, we are looking at student voice in the design, in the implementation, in the experience. We're looking at multilingualism. Um, we're looking at leveraging the advancements in, uh, of technology in advancing our mission of multilingualism and particularly humanizing pedagogy because this is one of the key principles of our teaching and learning uh, philosophy and approach at Nelson Mandela University. That as we advance technologically, how do we remain and foreground the humanizing pedagogy, the human aspect. And I'm sure it is a, a trend and a, a, a thread that, has, that we've discovered over the last two days, three days. So coming to our strategic institutional positions at Mandela, um, we've proposed the following 10 areas as strategic positions. We need to advance digital equity, looking at issues of access to mobile uh, devices, mobile learning, mobile opportunities, increasing assistive uh, technologies, our Wi-Fi infrastructure, and of course when it comes to design, focusing on natural user interfaces. The second, accelerating the implementation of e-assessment. So there's a particular focus on methodologies, on capacity, and also policy, that policy needs to accommodate this new area of e-assessment. We are focusing on learning design and support, we are focusing on digital literacy and digital citizenship, both for our staff and our students. What does it mean to be a digital citizen in the 21st century in South Africa at an African university? We are measuring our, our learning using and, uh, the benefits of learning analytics to enhance student success. We are adopting technologies that are relevant, not just adoption because it's, it's shiny and, it, and, and it's bright and we want to use it, but because it's relevant to the learning and teaching agenda. Uh, we are fostering a culture of innovation and research related to technology enhanced learning, and we are redesigning our learning and teaching spaces to be more conducive. We are expanding our institutional support, and lastly, we wish to create technology enhanced learning design hubs, and hopefully with these 10 areas as institutional positions, we hope to uh, enjoy the journey that lies ahead and we get your input as we do so. Thank you very much. Change the world.